can you say, Cerveza? It's time for the beer podcast, Morty. Worst beer podcast ever. Steve and Adam. Ah, funny guys. Hop Nation USA, beer podcast leaders for over five years. It's episode 252 of the Hop Nation USA podcast. And we're here. We're doing the thing. We got the beers. It's me, Steve, and then it's Adam. And that's it. We do the podcast. We do, and you listen to us, and you enjoy. You listen, and you have a laugh, and then maybe you have a beer. And then maybe a thought. And then maybe a thought, I don't know. And then we all go home. (laughs) (laughs) And we do it again next week. Yeah, we come back next week, we try again. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But yes, I am, of course, I am Adam, that is Steve. What are we doing this week? This week, we're doing an Ohio wellness check. (laughs) (laughs) Ohio, are you okay? Yeah, are you okay? Are things still going good for you? <laughs> I found I, I found two beers mm-hmm. uh, that uh, from breweries I had never fucking heard of. Oh, okay, <laughs> all right. So this is like auditioning. We're doing, you know, OGT Ohio Got Talent. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> and then I also and like both of the beers were on complete opposite ends of the spectrum. Mm-hmm. And so one of the beers I thought was for you. I appreciate that. And then one of the beers will be for me. Okay. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right. So it's two brand new breweries that I've never heard of. I don't right. know how new they are to the world. But. I don't I, know either. They yeah. can they can tell us after we tag them on social yeah. media. I got cans. And then we'll see how these cans are and we'll see what's up. Yeah. Can we change it to Ohio Does Beer? Ohio Does Beer? ODB? Yeah. Yeah. Do 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 do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yes. Yeah. So the first one we are going to have is from Birdfish. Yeah. Birdfish. (laughs) Never heard of them either. Uh, Although that being said, they are somewhat local to us. Okay. How close? Uh, They are out of Columbiana. Yeah. Okay. That's somewhat. That's that's south of Youngstown. Yeah. That's somewhat. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That's well within range. You could stop there before you go to Vintage Estates. Yeah. Yeah. It's well within the Vintage Estates radius. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Within the swoop. (laughs) Yes, it's along the uh, the O11 corridor. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So what we're having is their Bohemian Pilsner. Yes. This was definitely, I thought, I mean, it, it, as far as beer styles go, it would be up your alley. It kind of is. It kind of is. They call it their Bo Pills. Okay. Uh, it's better than calling it Bo P. <laughs> <laughs> That's worse. That's very much so. It gets worse. It gets worse as it gets smaller. <laughs> <laughs> Bohemian Pilsner. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Bo Pills, mm, it sounds like you're ripping off uh, Natty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, you know, Natty Bo. The, the, uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Bo P is terrible. We don't need Bo P in our life. No Bo P. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Uh, Although, I mean, like, put a sheep on the can, you call it little Bo P. Ah, uh, okay. See, that's why you need to get involved with some marketing department somewhere. Right. Make it a little bit better. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, but I'll give you some numbers. 4.2. That's the only one I could find. Yeah, sure. It's it's yeah. Bohemia Pills. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Expect. Uh, no idea on the IBUs. Uh, according to <sighs> Untapped, I assume it's their words because the description starts out as our Okay. So our Bohemian Czech Pilsner, Bo Pils for short, is our interpretation of the classic style, slightly sweet and slightly bitter, totally crushable. So hopefully it has a little bit of that Czech sauce. I hope so as well. A little little bit. Hopefully. We will find out right after we crack this sumbitch open. Okie dokie. Well, this one's going to be an easy one. It's Pilsner. It's a Pilsner. It's clear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't have to drag yourself down like that so much. The uh, the head retention was pretty bad on it, though. I was going to ask. Uh, I didn't seem like there was much going on in that department. Not much in the way of effervescence, either. Yeah, there's a little bit there's of effervescence. Some. Yeah, there's a little bit of effervescence. It looks like there's... I don't want to say a film, but... Just there, there's something on top... <laughs> Of the on top of the beer, okay. Yeah, All I don't right. know. Well, it's like a it's like a cloudiness. It's hard to explain. I it very much so because <laughs> I'm looking at it and I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know. Maybe it's something residual in the glass. That's a good possibility. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I got soap residue in this glass, yo. <laughs> Listen, we're a low buck operation around here. Damn it. <laughs> You're lucky it's clean in the first place. On the nose, though, I get I get Pilsner notes, obviously. Mm-hmm. It's, it's got the malt. It's got a little bit of that cracker. I, and I smell just a little bit of hop. Just enough. Just a touch. Yeah. Just enough to let you know it's a thing. Mm. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You don't hate it, do you? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. You've been drinking this for the last two weeks, haven't you? No. There is something fruity on that. Yes. Yes, there is. Yeah. It, it. I'm wondering. I'm genuinely curious what kind of hops they were using. I looked on their website. I didn't see anything. Yeah. Yeah, there's something, something really, really fruity up front. And then they have a, just a little bit of bitterness on the back end. Yeah. It kind of swaps from fruity to bitter. Yeah. Yeah. I don't hate it. I don't hate it either. Yeah. Because it's not just plain, like it's not plain ass cracker. <laughs> ass cracker. Yeah. The yeah the bitterness is very similar to that Arctos 12 mm-hmm. that we had at Stick City. So like I'm thinking again, it's maybe a little bit of check saws. Wouldn't surprise me. On the back end. I would be genuinely, genuinely curious to see what kind of hops were used in this. Yeah. What is that fruitiness though? <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I mean, it obviously there's no adjuncts in here. For multiple reasons. Number one, it's a Bohemian Pilsner. You're not supposed to do that anyways. Number two, ju- judging by the clarity of it, there's not going to be any adjuncts in there. Yeah. It's almost uh, it's almost bubble gummy. Oh, bit. Yeah. Uh, I, mm, I wonder what kind of yeast they were using. Because as soon as you said bubble gummy, that automatically put me towards the heavy side of things. Yeah, heffies and uh, Belgians sometimes have bubble gum. I think there is a... Hop that has a little bit of a bubble gum. Wouldn't surprise me. Profile. But again, can you do that and still call it uh, Bohemian Pilsner? Well, sure. You can lie about it. You could do anything yeah. you want. Yeah, you this is true. Fair. <laughs> Fair point. <laughs> yeah, people lie all the time. <laughs> I guess I should have qualified that a little bit. Okay, so hold on. I, I'm I'm doing a little, little on-the-fly research. Sleuthing. A little on the fly sleuthing. Okay. There, uh, there is apparently four hops that have been classified as having bubble gum uh, uh, traits to them. Okay. And this is according to beermaverick.com because that's the first thing that re- Google returned. So don't. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but uh, African Queen, mm-hmm. Mosaic, uh, Simcoe, and Southern Tropic. Southern Tropic. I've never even heard of that one. Yeah, well, it's from uh, South Africa, so... Well, that does make sense. That adds up. Right. <laughs> Judging by the name. <laughs> yeah. I... Hmm. I would be... Yeah, again, I'd be very interested. Because, again, it, like Mosaic and Simcoe, I felt like I've never gotten... The bubbly gum? Right. Yeah. But maybe if there's just like a a, a, a specific point you put it in... Maybe? It takes advantage of. I don't know. Uh, you know what we could do? What? We could just ask. Yeah, I'll, I'll probably ask. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably ask, but I'm I'm wildly intrigued at this point because it's like, why do I have like a bubblegum sauzy? So are you willing to admit that this is actually an interesting Pilsner? It's definitely an interesting Pilsner. That's all I ask. I don't, I don't, I'm not going to. I can't call it the best Pilsner, but it's definitely interesting. And that's, and I'm not asking if you consider it the best or if it's something that you need to have a 12 pack in your fridge at all the time. All I want to know is you consider it interesting. Yeah, for sure. I call it a win right there. Yeah. Yeah. This is, again, this is something that craft beer should be uh, achieving and attaining as best they can. Because when you want to set, again, if you want to set yourself apart, mm-hmm. From macro, you know, we've said before, like, how hard it is to separate, you know, like, an old style from a PBR, from a hams, right. from a fucking Bud Light, you know. Yeah, well, they all basically come out of the same tube. So. Right. <laughs> it's it, it's the Simpsons Duff. <laughs> yeah, Duff, Duff yeah. Light, Duff Dry. Right. <laughs> it's the Simpsons Duff you know, meme, if you've seen it before. But, like, the what we had from the Arctos mm-hmm. is... I mean, it while it is similar to a Pilsner or, or a Kell, you know, it still stands out on its own. Yeah. And I say this stands out from, you know, the Arctos and the Pilsner or Kell and all the other stuff, mm-hmm. you know, because it has these interesting notes. 
And on the other side of that, it's also a good beer because it's, yes, it, it is interesting and it has these kind of nuances to it, but the nuances aren't overpowering. You can still just sit here and drink the beer. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, you could just sit on a back porch and drink it and not have a care in the world. Yeah, it's still noticeably beer. It's not. Yes. It, yeah, we said bubble gum and we said, mm. you know, earthy and spicy and like. All these fun words. Yeah, like those are there, but like, it, yeah. It's still beer. Right. You, <laughs> you could choose your own adventure kind of beer. Mm-hmm. Do you want to analyze it and break it apart and figure out what's going on? Or you just want to sit there and have a hot dog and uh, just watch the sunset with this thing? Yeah. Either fine. way is fine. Yeah, it's fine. So, yeah. Kind of wondering why it didn't retain any head retention. That is interesting. But maybe maybe your fucking dishwasher did something bad. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Is your, let me ask, is your Cascade bubblegum flavored? <laughs> it is not. Okay. It is not. Right, I, I give you a no bubblegum Cascade guarantee. Okay, then. Because I don't think they make that. Because if they did, I would buy it. Fair enough. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, yeah, it, pretty decent. I don't completely hate it. Right. Good stuff coming out of Columbiana. Yeah. So there, there's there's the first audition down, and we'll probably check out Birdfish more in the future, especially if agreed they're this close. And uh, you know, if I can just get some at uh, Vintage. And uh, I was actually poking around on their website while you were pouring stuff up, yeah. and they have you know interesting beers as well. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of times, and and I and I hesitate to say this, but I'm going to say it anyways. A lot of times, smaller town breweries don't necessarily flex their muscle a bunch. Right. A, a bunch. Right. But the, looking at the tap list, they have enough interesting beers there to make it kind of, you know, piquing my interest. Yeah. You know, they have a pineapple acai cream ale. Yeah. An imperial black goza. You know, but they also have simple stuff. They have an Irish Irish ale. They have a chocolate or a coffee milk stout, mm-hmm. hazy IPA for, you know, people that like those sorts of things. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, they, they're willing to kind of run the gamut. Yeah, and I, I appreciate that. I saw that they had an Italian Pilsner. Yes. And that's not like a common style. No, but people... it is becoming more and more common. Right. It's becoming more and more common. But like it, yeah, that's definitely something I expect to come out of like Pittsburgh for sure. Mm-hmm. Looking at you, 11th Hour. 11th Hour has one. Top Farm has one. Uh, Insurrection has one. Mm-hmm. You know, and those are the ones I can name off the top of my head. I'm sure there's some other ones right. out there as well. But yeah, like I expect that because like, you know, we have a concentration of brewers and like, you know, some of the best brewers in the world. Mm-hmm. They're all here. Uh, but yeah, you're right. Like when you think about these smaller towns, you don't, it, it's a toss up. Yeah. Because on the one hand, you can get apparently what Birdfish is doing or like we had Modern Methods not too long ago. Right. At a Youngstown and they're, you know, uh, uh, the, I'm assuming Birdfish is coming from a a very homebrew focused that would add up, you know, this is the same way modern methods did. Mm-hmm. Like they come from a very homebrew focus and like they have an appreciation and affinity. Whereas it's not just somebody starting a brewery. Right. This is, this is not a, a business to make money. Mm-hmm. This is a business out of love. Right. And I, I think there's a, I, I think it's probably happening less and less often that you just get the brewery and brew pub happening mm-hmm. just to happen just because an old guy has money right <laughs> that, because the cost of entry in terms of skill level has gotten so high to right. be competitive right yeah yeah to be competitive and hold and just actually hold one right. without without getting sunk by the next one that opens up right or yeah unless you're willing to have it for bragging rights and you're just willing to just bleed money yeah, Which, right. Why you would do that I have no idea <laughs> yeah or if you just live in Nebraska you could maybe get away with that Maybe like on the outskirts of Lincoln. <laughs> Maybe you can so, you can still open like a shitty brew pub with four styles on tap. <laughs> oh, n- Maybe. Maybe I, I don't. don't know. I, well, but I don't think so. What What is uh, is there any known breweries that came out of Nebraska? <laughs> There's one, and I always forget it. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. I've. I've. Yeah. Well, sorry, Nebraska. Yeah, I've had beer in Nebraska. Like you know, just traveling mm-hmm. and yeah stopped in nebraska and had beer in nebraska it's horrible <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying there's opportunity in that market oh yeah <laughs> ah. it's gotta be <laughs> <laughs> uh 
Well, yeah, let's continue uh, sipping on this birdfish, the sure. Bohemian Pilsner. Little Bo Pee. <laughs> <laughs> Should we talk some news, notes, and neats? That's what they. That's what they call. Look, birdfish, you might be listening. Maybe this is your first episode. And if you are, thank probably you. Probably is, but who knows? Uh, but if you're listening, that's what you call like the session table style. Ah, three percent. Yeah, that's okay. your that's your little Bo Pee. That's smart. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> that's why you said it. That's why I said it. I'm a genius. <laughs> Uh, that one was for free, yeah. by the way. That one's for free. <laughs> now, if you want can designs and shit, you know, open up that wallet. <laughs> <laughs> he's generous, but he's still got to pay the bills. That's right. <laughs> uh, but yes, yeah, so let's get into a little triple N, uh, the news, the notes, and the neats. Indeed. Yes. So I, I have one, speaking okay. of my genius. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> If you've seen on the Instagram, mm-hmm. uh, the, the, this was originally posted by Jen at Hello Brutiful. Yes. Uh, her and Ben went down to Mondays. Mondays. Just in time for the beer douche to get his stamp out. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you can go back a couple episodes to revisit the time we interviewed the Pittsburgh beer douche. It's probably a month ago or so. At least. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we were talking about him getting a douche approved stamp. <laughs> Now it's a reality. <laughs> it's a thing. Yeah. <laughs> so you can get your hand stamped, douche approved. <laughs> I suggest doing it. You know, if you're listening on a Friday, then perhaps you're going to beers on the Berg tomorrow. Go you find know. the douche. Go get douche approved. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Mondays is porn. And uh, yeah, go find Mondays and go get douche approved stamped by uh, the Pittsburgh beer douche. And if you're unable to, just go down to Mondays outright. Yeah. Let's go to Mondays. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, just go to Mondays and then it'll be working. And you mm-hmm. get stamped there too. But you get douche approved. Indeed. But uh, yeah, that was our idea. But it has to be said that Sam Mm -hmm. took the initiative to to buy Mike his gift of the douche approved stamp. Yes. And and I must give a shout out as well uh, to both the douche and the Sam of going through the process of asking everything correctly. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, because there are some other people out there who just sort of take it. And do what they want with it. Yeah. But no, everybody did everything correctly. Yeah. Sam, so thank you. Yeah. Sam, Sam did send us a nice email and just like, mm-hmm. can I have that? I was like, of course you can. Right. It's right. hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, we want that to happen. Yes. yes. <laughs> but also, yes, it's best to reach out because I'll give you the proper artwork. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I went through and I did all the proofing on the stamp site. I'm like, yeah, okay, go ahead. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> the thing. You know, it, it, it helps everybody, yeah. you know, because... Your name is attached to it, yeah. So they get the best quality. Yeah, you get you now. We have the best quality douche approved stamp out in the wild, and it has the uh, has the nice little uh, Pittsburgh. Oh, what are they called? Hypocycloids. Oh, yeah, the hypocycloids. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you. It's, it's fucking geometry, and I do not do that. <laughs> <laughs> I just got done watching Jeopardy, so my my brain is all fired up. Good. 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 Yeah. But yeah, that that's you know that's w- one of my local notes. I have some more, but okay, I have a not so local note. Yeah, uh, this is a real quick hitter. Yeah, uh, the Kalamazoo baseball team okay is changing their name to uh, from from <laughs> uh, the Kalamazoo Growlers uh-huh. to the Kalamazoo Growlers. Okay, so they are changing their name from the Kalamazoo Growlers, as in bears. Okay, as in to Kalamazoo Growlers, as in Beer. Beer jugs. Okay. That's a really weird thing to kind of describe a growler besides beer jug. Yeah, it, I mean, it's a beer jug. It's, it's a beer it's jug. It's a jug. Yeah. <laughs> now, that makes sense because mm-hmm. how many bears are really in that area? Not as many as there are growlers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just, uh, yeah. <laughs> so they are, they are doing that to celebrate craft beer in the area of course <laughs> Duh, it's michigan <laughs> it's michigan there is literally a beer called the kalamazoo stout <laughs> out there <laughs> exactly and i believe uh, is that bells that does that yeah how the how the hell long like it's 2022 right get on the stick how, how did you wait this long was there a contract with the bear i don't think so <laughs> although funny enough the bear's name is porter Oh, that's funny. <laughs> so it's all coming together. Uh, so they also have alternative logos available of a, it is a growler swinging a bat 
while having a giant mustache. Like a Raleigh Fingers? Uh, more, ooh, how would I? More of a, uh, a uh, oh, what the hell is his name? Sam, um, Sam Elliott. Yeah, Sam Elliott. Sam, yeah, a very Sam Elliott-esque okay. mustache. Okay, all right. Are they investing in, like, a big suit? I don't think they are. Boo. Uh, but I will say that they did celebrate uh, the announcement uh, at the uh, their founding partner's brewery. Mm. Bells. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so there's a definite connection there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kalamazoo, Kalamazoo Stout. Yeah. Kalamazoo Growlers. It all makes sense. It's though. all coming together. It's all together. Now, when are they going to play the Savannah Bananas? <laughs> Man, that needs to happen. <laughs> I would watch the shit out of that. Yeah. I would watch the shit of the bananas playing anybody. <laughs> right. Uh, and just a little bit of additional note. Kalamazoo has the fifth most breweries per 50,000 people. Shit. <laughs> they got a lot of breweries up there. Good for them. They're doing all right. Good for them. So, yeah, that's it. Just a quick hitter. Uh, yeah. Go Growlers. Uh, thank you, Katie, for uh, setting us up with that one. Nice. <laughs> yeah, that, that wasn't my doing. That was Katie. Gotcha. So, so thank you, Katie. <laughs> all right. Back to local. Yes. We got a bit of a one, two, three situation. As in the one, two, three kid? No. All right. <laughs> no. No Xbox stuff. Thank goodness. Uh, no, it is a, a one, two, three situation of next weekend. Okay. Is the first anniversary of two forays. Already? Yeah. Oh, damn. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so June 17th through the 19th, they're going to be uh, having a thing going. Okay. So we just haven't they it's they didn't make specific uh details known at the moment okay but it's gonna they're, they plan on having music and food and right. you know, just general entertainments they're they're doing their one year anniversary for two phrase good three is the weekend after all right <laughs> and june 25th intergroove is doing their third year anniversary that's awesome yeah and they're uh, they are they have a lot more details because they're doing. They're really doing it up. Are they really? Yeah, they're they're having a party in the park at the railroad park, which is basically right down the street I from was, the tap room. That's yeah. what I was figuring. Yeah, makes sense. Just, yeah, it's walking distance. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, they're doing uh, they're doing music all day. So they'll have like a vinyl DJ from noon to like six ish. Okay, and then they have uh, a live band. Called Nashville or Nashville. Nashville? Could be that too. All right. Just looks like a lot. Of, <laughs> All right. I don't know it well enough, but <laughs> it's one of those. And then they'll play a live set. Right on. Uh, six to nine, I believe. But yeah. And then they're also going to have like four food trucks there. Oh, this is turning into a big thing. Yeah. Okay. All one, right. One of them includes Mike's Dirty Dogs. <laughs> I just wanted to. <laughs> you just wanted to say it like that, didn't you? Yeah. Bless up Norm McDonald. Dirty Dog. <laughs> Dirty Dog. <laughs> Man. <laughs> uh, then they'll have like anniversary beer releases. They're doing an anniversary t-shirt release. Okay. Yeah. And then there's also going to be in the park, they'll have uh, record shopping. So like oh, pe right. people with record collections are going to come and like have little pop-ups and you, okay. can, you can shop for some vinyl. Oh, uh, was there any word if they were doing anything at the, uh, the Allentown location? I'm sure. I'm sure they'll have like the beer releases and the merch release. But, okay. Yeah. This is more like focused on the original tap room and, you know, just because they have that park across the street. Why wouldn't you use it? Right. And uh, yeah. And if you haven't been there, go there. It's yeah. nice. Yeah, it's nice. They're nice. Yeah. They make good beers. It's nice. Uh, yeah. So that's on June 25th. Okay. Uh, conflict of interest <laughs> with me. <laughs> with you. Yeah. Because also that night at Hop Farm, the uh, they'll be doing the May Queen Farmhouse Ale release. And why is that important to you, Steve? I'll also be there. We'll be doing a, a live Halloween is Forever podcast from there. So <laughs> get there. Yeah, check it out. I mean, you can you can do both because I mean, like I said, the 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 inner groove. That's that's noon to ten. So that's true. Yeah, that's hop, a, hop farm stuff don't start till seven. So <laughs> noon to ten. Oh, you're gonna get blown out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. Get all get all wasted up in an inner groove, and then come down and you know play and watch it. You know we're not screening the whole movie, but you know we'll have some clips and we'll be talking midsummer. That's how you end up with the Smokey and the Bandit soundtrack on vinyl. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Drinking all day is like, yeah, I got an extra twenty five bucks. That's how you wind up with like a Kansas album. 
on vinyl because <laughs> you see it has carry on wayward son and even if you don't know any of the other songs it doesn't matter yeah <laughs> i'm gonna play this on the car on the way over yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh, i'll have the uber driver put it in it'll be fine <laughs> but yeah yeah come over hop farm as well and uh the 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 may queen releases like a collaboration with pink boots as well as coven brewing and uh yeah Awesome. It's a good, good thing. It's all good things going down in the next couple of weeks. So check them out. Pittsburgh is happening. Happening in the summer. Yes, it is. I got one more international news uh-huh. about a Welshman. Okay. <laughs> uh, Welsh. <laughs> <laughs> why you gotta? Why you gonna be all stanky on the Welsh? Uh, because of their egregious use of spelling <laughs> this is okay all right i can't argue against that um i'm gonna put five consonants right next to each other and somehow it makes a new sound <laughs> cut the shit <laughs> uh well you won't be saying that about this gentleman uh who is a guinness world record holder okay uh a welsh man he drank at 56 pubs in a 24-hour span what the fuck <laughs> yes <sighs> yes uh, his name is Gareth Murphy. Okay. He's still in his 20s. That's how, how many Y's? <laughs> uh, one. One Y. At Just the one end. at the end. Okay. Yeah. I almost read it. It's like, no, there's no. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Murph with an I-E. Uh, but yes, he is from. Oh, no. I read the name of the town he's from. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Carnifum? Yeah, no, that's probably wrong. So. Carnifum? Carnifum. <laughs> Car- Carnifum. Yeah, it's probably wrong. It's, it's probably like Newfoundland. <laughs> Newfoundland. <laughs> Newfoundland. <laughs> but yes, he drank at 56 pubs in 24 hours. There is one giant caveat to this. Yeah. Which really made me think twice about talking about this in the first place. Okay. He didn't drink beer at all of them. Oh, that's yeah. bullshit. Right. Uh, he had some Diet Pepsi, some cranberry juice, some lemonade, some Coca-Cola. <laughs> And then it got worse. Yeah. And then it got worse. A quote from Gareth. I knew I had to stay off the Guinness as it's quite a heavy drink. Yeah, he's Welsh, not Irish. Ah, but it's light. I don't care who you I are. Don't, yeah, I understand. But like he's Welsh. So like they're not smart. <laughs> I don't know that. <laughs> I, I don't, know that. <laughs> I don't know any Welshmen or Welsh women. <laughs> well, the Welsh women, <laughs> they're uh, usually covered in wool. Hacha. Uh, that's right, because they're very good at making sweaters, Steve. <laughs> the Welsh. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> we like the Welsh on this show. How does Guinness? How does Guinness even tolerate that? I don't know. Actually, I do know how, uh, because it had been previously stated that uh, records involving alcohol consumption are not to be considered part of their record books. Oh, so with that in mind, I assume that there had to be some level of non-alcoholic activities. Mm -hmm. So that's Mm -hmm. where the lemonade came into the play. I get you. Okay, I still think that's easily beatable. Maybe if you if you get into a very dense area, yeah, I think you can do it. I'm trying. I'm trying to think. Like I feel like you could probably easily beat that in Philly. I was thinking Vegas. Vegas. Just go. Just go through the strip. Hit all the casinos. Yeah. All the bars in the different casinos. I guess, but like, do they consider those, you know, what, what defines a pub, I guess? I and, guess that's a point. Cause yeah. like, cause you're, I, I see what you're saying about like all the different bars in casinos, mm-hmm. but then do those count as separate entities or does that just all fall under the roof of Caesar's Palace? You know, it's uh, just like one. Okay. That's fair. That's yeah. fair. I see what you're yeah. saying. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Neither do I. So Philly so, it is. <laughs> yeah. So I just feel it, like, but I feel like there's enough like, there's enough dirty dives. Yeah. Because I, I, I just I think of how dense Pittsburgh is, right? We've got we've got solid density. Mm-hmm. I just don't know that we have enough. And our fucking public transit is trash. So <laughs> you don't think there's fifty six pubs or uh houses of ale in the south side? No, I think that I think there I, I think, think you can do that. I think you could probably do it in Pittsburgh, but I'm just thinking even bigger density, like bigger population, everything. Mm-hmm. I like I would say try it in Philly. I I would do I would do it in Pittsburgh. Yeah, I would do fifty seven. Okay, that's God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> you kidding me? The Post Gazette would eat that up. I'm gonna store it for manis. I'm gonna end at it for manis. <laughs> that's right. 
You could totally do that. Yeah. Actually, but, I think you could do that. Yeah. I mean, with all the ones that are on the south side, you get everything in the south side. Mm-hmm. Then you have to do a transfer to like downtown. Yeah. Hit a couple things downtown, then do a transfer to the north side where there's more. Yeah. And then, then from there, figure it out. I think you could definitely do it. Yeah. Because it's 24 hours. Yeah. Yeah, 24 hours. That's the other. So you, you figure that's less than 24 hours, 56. That's less than 30 minutes a place, including walking. Yeah. Now you go in, it, you you would probably have to do a lot of coordination. You probably have to have, you know, like a taster set up ready to go. Yeah. Walk in, hit that taster, pay the bill, walk back out. So you should get like an army of like five friends to go ahead of you. Yeah. And then like have mm-hmm. everybody waiting at a bar for you. Right. And then once you finish a bar, they take off to the next one. Exactly. So it's, it's a relay. Yeah. 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 You can just sort of stack people up, get yeah. them one or two bars ahead. Yeah. I feel like in that case, you are you also would probably end up stopping on the south side just because there'll be a open later. Uh, yeah, you go places. to like a Jack's or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you could definitely. Well, yeah, you could definitely do that. And then you'll have to find like, I mean, it depends on how long you want to carry it. Because like if you want to try to stay up the entire 24 hours. I see what you're saying. Yeah, you could you could do the casino. And you could do like some of the after hours clubs. Right. So yeah. They could do it could happen. I think this is a good goal for twenty twenty three. It's doable. It's doable. It's out there. I'm gonna get, <laughs> I'm gonna get in drinking shape. <laughs> I will not. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get in drinking shape if you already are in drinking shape. That's right. <laughs> but all right. One last quick one. Sure. G A B F coming back. Yeah. Apparently. Nice. Apparently. And uh it'll be back October sixth to the eighth. It's going to be smaller. Okay. Because a bunch of reasons. Right. One, COVID. Yeah. Two, construction at the venue. Three, uh, it's going to have to like share a date. So it'll be like two expos going at once. Oh. That kind of thing. Okay. I don't know what the other expo is, but apparently there's another event happening the same day. All right. Tractor Con. Which, I mean, hey, it could be really fun. Because, I mean, there's it was always a thing where like CES... And the AVN Awards ah, were going on at oh, the same time in no. Vegas. Yeah. yeah. I mean, well, that it, look, it's just nerd perverts. like Nerdverts. Yeah, just going back and forth between <laughs> the two. I saw a boob, and then I saw a touch screen. <laughs> <laughs> Shut so, up. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so I don't know what's going to happen with G- GABF, but um, so if, now, you're part, if, if you're part of the American Homebrewers Association, though, mm-hmm. you get first crack at tickets. Okay. Uh, and they go on sale July 12th and uh, $95 per session. Okay. Four sessions. All right. And so, then, uh, and then regular, regular Jamokes get them the next day. So yeah, go to the pretty good American beer fest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the pretty okay. beer fest. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we get back to the birdfish Bohemian Pilsner? Sure. Oh, I like it. I don't hate it. Honestly, I'm still calling that a win. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a win for Pilsners when I go, yeah, I don't hate that. Right. Mm-hmm. You don't. Yeah. I, you actively went back for more. Yeah. 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 It, I just wanted to see, like, does the flavor change too much? Uh, the longer I drank it, mm-hmm. the less that uh, that bubblegummy flavor, like, was present. Yeah. It started to mute itself a little bit more and become a little bit more of the uh, bitter bitterness. Mm-hmm. Just, you know, uh I'm assuming it's sauce hops. We'll find out. <laughs> Just because they're they're calling it Czech style, and it had a very similar flavor to other things I've had flavored with right. sauce hops. So, yeah. Uh, otherwise, yeah, didn't hate it. You liked it, so I did. I I'm, did. So I'm assuming this is going to be for other people. Like, yes, you know, enjoyable. <laughs> there is a very particular phrase you can use for this situation. No, oh. <laughs> say it. For the style. There it is. <laughs> Say the line, Bart. <laughs> yeah, for the style, it is. Yeah, it, it is enjoyable. Um, I, I I would probably not turn my nose up at it if mm-hmm. it was in a cooler and like I was drinking at a ball game or something. Yeah, and I was putting down a bunch of other stuff, but then just needed like a palate cleanser mm-hmm. or like needed to ease off the seven percents. Right, <laughs> right. Take a stroll a little bit. Yeah, light up on the gas. <laughs> <laughs> Which, yeah, 
Yeah. Uh, at four two, it's fine for that. So yeah. exactly. Uh, one problem I do have with this is I keep getting tempted to call it birdhouse. Right. And then realizing that Tony Hawk is not associated with this bird. Not at all. As far as I know. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> it is. I don't know when this brewery started. I don't either. And it just my problem is, it's just like breweries in general. Anybody listening, if you plan on starting a brewery. Three words you should not incorporate anymore. Bird, fish and dog. There's enough. There's, there's enough <laughs> birds, fishes, and dogs, and combinations of their those words therein. So what if what if their next beer was the bird, fish, dog? I don't. I, <laughs> there, I spoke it into existence for you. Only if it's spelled D A W G. <laughs> I mean, yeah, all right. <laughs> what up, dog? <laughs> What's up, dog? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's just like it, there's enough of that. <laughs> That's fair. Find a new animal. <laughs> Like the chinchilla. Yeah. Chinchilla don't get no love around here. Yeah. He's got a happy bear brewing. Ooh. Bet there's one in South America or Central America. Man, that'd be a happy little brewery. Yeah. Be chill. Be chill as fuck. Yeah. So we're going to chill right now. We're going to go to our first break. Uh-huh. We're going to get another beer. Uh-huh. We're going to do something else. Yeah. First Sip Brew Box is a -a one-of-a-kind subscription service for craft beer lovers based right here in Pittsburgh. Every month, First Sip will send you a box full of craft beer enthusiast essentials, including t-shirts, glassware, and even food. Right now, our friends at First Sip Brew Box have an offer for you. Just sign up for a three-month subscription and get your fourth month free. Just enter the code HOPUSA when you sign up at firstsipbrewbox.com. That's H-O-P-U-S-A at checkout to get your fourth month free at First Sip Brew Box. Dot com. Oh, welcome back. Episode 252, Hop Nation USA podcast, doing a high wellness check. <laughs> so far, so good. Yeah. yeah. So far, things are well at Birdfish Brewery. <laughs> yes. Columbiana on the rise. Yeah. Good for them. Uh, the next beer, though, is also coming from a higher. And this is more in my lane. Okay. Uh, it's from the Numbers Brewing Company. I say more in my lane, but even still, it's not. <laughs> Am I going to hate it? Yes. Oh. You will hate it. Oh. I, I only say it's more in my lane because it's definitely not in yours. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. What but, is it? But from the Numbers Brewing Company, it is called Sour My Patch. It is a hazy IPA aged on sour candies. Sour Patch. Okay. Candies, All obviously. right. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it comes in at uh, four three on the ABV. Weird. Yeah. So numbers, they're out of Lisbon, Ohio, which Ooh. is also close-ish. It is. Yeah. So Interesting. Yeah. This is this is the first beer from them that kind of stuck out to me. Judging I, by the can label, I can see why. Yeah. Yeah. The They have, they're called numbers, and they have like this whole numbers gang gimmick going. Okay. So like they have a beer, I think it's like 22, which is just like a standard amber ale or something. Okay. You know, it, it's just kind of that. And then, uh, yeah, I haven't seen anything until now. Okay. Style wise, that wasn't just like that standard blonde ale, pale ale, yeah, stout. Okay. This is the first one that like bucked all of their conventions. Okay. And it's not a numbered beer. Yeah. So it's okay. Yeah. So I was like, all right, I'll give it a try. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. But, uh, yeah, they're they opened up in 2016, so okay, they're, they're relatively new, but relatively. also relatively experienced. Yeah, I mean that's t- only two years less than say Grist House, right? So <laughs> yeah, relatively new, like in comparison to Bells, <laughs> right? Right, exactly. <laughs> in comparison to Trove, they're new. <laughs> uh, so shall we get into this? I'm willing to go in with an open mind here, because uh-huh. I don't have a choice. Damn it. Mm hmm. Okay, let's do it. Okie dokie. All righty. So the first beer looked like Bohemian Pilsner. What does this look like, Steve? Looks like a hazy IPA. <laughs> we are doing well. Ohio, off to a fine start. You did it. <laughs> yeah, hey, nothing too remarkable. Uh, it had like a normal amount of head retention, mm-hmm. which is nice considering they said they aged it on Sour Patch Kids. Yes. They, you know. I was expecting a little bit more. Uh, I mean, this is hazy. Yeah. Like a, a an actual haze rather than... Occluded? Yes. Wow. <laughs> that's a fine word. I'm not even yeah. sure if that's real. It's a good word. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Instead of just like the complete opaque 
juice yeah. that you get sometimes. Right. This is legitimate hazy. Yeah, it's legitimately hazy, in, but you can still see through it, and it still has it has a little bit of a deeper color. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's not it's deeper than a straw. I would say it's closer to goldenrod than that. Yes, so. agreed. Agreed. Not a bad looking beer at no. all. On the nose, uh, you could kind of pick up some of the sour. Yeah, you pick you pick up some sour candy notes. Mm-hmm. Uh, a little bit of a little bit of citrus. Yeah, yeah. Uh, was there any word on what the hops used on this? No. Okay. <laughs> no, there was scant few details on uh, Untapped. Okay, so Ohio general statement. Yeah, <laughs> tell us the hops you're using. All of Ohio, right? <laughs> Everybody. Tell us the hops you use. Tell us what's going on. Yeah, it, it it literally was just the same description on the can, oh, okay. which is hazy IPA aged on Sour Patch Kids. Which, to be fair, nobody is beholden to untapped to no. list the life story of the beer. No. so But it can help, <laughs> like in this case. <laughs> right. Especially when I could also not find that information on your website. Fair. If I can't find it on your website or on... <laughs> right. Yeah problem <laughs> yeah i get that yeah all right uh let's try it you go first <laughs> hold on well uh, um <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Uh, well it, I, I find this beer frustrating mm-hmm. because if it's supposed to be uh you know it's supposed to be made on sour patch kids right i'm not really finding any sourness but at the same True. time, I'm not really finding any, I'll say, classic bitterness from an IPA. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm not a fan. Uh, yeah, me either. <laughs> ah, damn it, it. it is. Uh, this tastes like homebrew. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I. It, it doesn't. It doesn't really reach any pinnacles in flavor in one way or the other. Because, like you're saying. You'd expect some sourness, right? Mm-hmm. And instead of just aging it on Sour Patch Kids, if you want to goose it, you mm-hmm. could throw citric acid in there. Right. You know, that's one of the things <laughs> that goes into Sour Patch Kids. So you could just throw in concentrated versions. Yeah. Um, IPA-wise, I don't get a clear sense of what the hops being used are. Right. Like the, the hops aren't very flavorful. And it just yeah yeah I uh, and I've taken a couple of sips and if you don't go back and let the aftertaste kind of sit around for a bit mm-hmm. uh, not great yeah and you don't get a clear since since I'm assuming that they just used sour patch kids of all flavor mm-hmm. there's not a clear fruit flavor to it right right it, it's it's almost in this sort of uncanny valley. Mm. Between IPA and sour, mm-hmm. where you get neither. It's yeah, it's 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 in a bad valley of also not being a dessert beer either. It is not because you you would think this would be calling for a dessert beer of being a candy, right? And it it doesn't it doesn't hit the notes that you would expect from like a decadent IPA, right? Which where they say we're a fucking you know a chocolate macaroon. Whatever, but it still comes out <laughs> looking like straw. Right, exactly. <laughs> but it, it has all those flavors and then like a weird hop mm-hmm. aftertaste. And some people are into that and some people aren't. But they at least always hit their flavor notes. Correct. This, yeah, as, it, it, as wild and stupid as they be. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know that I could hand this to somebody and say, what, you know, what? Was this made on? What was this flavored with? Mm-hmm. And anybody's going to come back with sour pancakes. Yeah, nobody's going. Yeah, nobody's going to tell you what this is. Yeah, people are going to go. Why is there? Why is there a slight medicinal flavor to it? <laughs> right. Why is there no distinct hop? Like it, it's it's got to be probably citra. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I citra am, maybe mosaic. Right. I, I I mean I'm curious as to what they were using. I think I think it's just kind of a blend. Mm-hmm. And that's why they didn't list it because that's fair. Breweries do that sometimes where they're just not looking to put out. If it, if it's not particularly pertinent to the recipe. Right. Right. So like, you know, I can see how this one could be made with cascade hops mm-hmm. or 
citra hops and it wouldn't really matter because it's not the star of the show it's not the star of the show if if they were hitting the candy note that they want right right it wouldn't be the star of the show but yeah this just kind of tastes like uh, a lot of home brews i've had <laughs> yeah so moving on cool <laughs> <laughs> moving on uh i wanted to look into uh it, we we've been out of the binge drinking game for a minute yeah yeah, that's because our age starts with a three now. Right. <laughs> so, but, like, maybe it's time to get back. You think so? As the world collapses. Go down uh, with a little bit of fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's not let's not be, you know, sour grapes about it. Let's go. <laughs> let's get in on the fun. But if we have to get in on the fun, we better brush up on what games the kids is playing. What are the games is play- the kids is playing? They got a bunch. They invented some shit while we was gone. <laughs> yes, they did. <laughs> So I don't know where you sourced a lot of your stuff, but we can kind of go back and forth. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we're yeah, this whole segment is about fucking drinking games. Yeah, because I found some good ones. <laughs> I found some ones that got me excited to binge drink again. Oh, <laughs> yeah. okay, all right. Yeah, and then maybe hopefully you will too. <laughs> so I actually went another direction, and okay. I I invented games. Oh, okay, yeah. I invented one. I got two. But, okay, yeah, okay. Uh, so uh, I, I'll start with a couple. Uh, I'll start with a couple I found. Okay. And I went to where all the young people hang out. Uh, Instagram? Nope. Facebook. That's not right. No, that's not right at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, hold on. What's the one with the ghost? Snapchat. Not Snapchat. <laughs> um, TikTok. TikTok. There it is. I went to TikTok. <laughs> yeah, getting on that TikTok. I go on that TikTok. Uh, search hashtag drinking games. What you come up with? A bunch. Oh, all right. <laughs> it is filthy with drinking games. <laughs> nice. But I, I picked a couple of the ones that uh, really piqued my interest and I thought were fun. Uh, I'll start. I, I found a couple variants on ones that already exist. Example. So I found a variant on cornhole, which was simply just somebody had taken a cornhole board mm-hmm. and they divided each board into quadrants. Okay. So where wherever the band, uh, wherever the bag lands. Yeah kind of has a direction of like ah, okay. drink to partner drinks to something like that okay all so, right i like that yeah it's that's a, a, yeah. That's a nice evolution of the game yeah yeah just added more to it mm-hmm. uh another one though is uh people have been making flip cup a lot more competitive really like wildly competitive <laughs> really so the the flip cup variant is uh, involving a shot oh so it starts it starts with uh Doing the normal chug of of flip cup, mm-hmm. and this is usually like a one v one, okay, or a four way dance, a fatal four way. Oh geez, okay. I've seen the fatal four way version, <laughs> which is fucking dope as hell too. But the way it goes is, uh, do flip cup, drink it, yeah, and then every time you land a flip, you move a shot glass closer to your opponent. Ah, okay. And so basically, it boils down to if you can do three cups in a row, yeah. Before your opponent can, you'll have moved the shot glass in front of them. Oh. And they take the shot. Okay. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, that'd be awful. Yeah. Fatal four-way dance uh-huh. works very similarly, but it's like it's almost like a matrix grid. Okay. And, you know, your three opponents can move the glass. Oh, right. that's pretty cool. So if somebody wanted to, if three people wanted to really gang up on somebody, uh-huh. they could all just move the glass <laughs> after one <laughs> flip on you. <laughs> uh, the variation that I, I have seen uh, and played, it actually comes from uh, a friend of the show, Bubba. Yeah. Uh, slip and flip. Okay. That's where you combine flip cup with a slip and slide. Ah, Everybody's at the top of the hill. You have two teams. I've, se- I've seen this. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, and you uh, you have a, a very large slip and slide team based, of course, not just a single runner, because mm-hmm. that would be very dangerous. You have the table at the bottom of the hill with all your cups ready to go. Mm-hmm. Team starts. Two runners go down, slip and slide their way down to the table, do their flipping of their cups, and then they go the rest of the way down into an inflatable fun house. Ah. So it's sort of like halfway up the hill. Okay. So once you're done, then you get to go down out of the way. Yeah. And then the last person into the fun house loses. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. It's, it's a good variation on, on the yeah. classic flip cup. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's a bit of setup in that one. Yeah. And I've seen setup in some of these other ones mm-hmm. that are also equally impressive. Yes. But. So shout out to Bubba for introducing that to the world. Yeah. I don't care if he isn't the one that invented it. <laughs> I feel He's like that's getting a, credit. He lived in Texas for a minute. 
and I feel like that's a real Texas thing. We're just going to hydrox him. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. Yeah. I just feel like that's a real Texas thing. That sounds like, very Texas-y. Of like big yards mm-hmm. and fucking around in the water and, you know. Trying to stay cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But what uh, what was one of the ones you invented? One of the ones that I invented. Uh, have you ever heard of the game Spike Ball? Yes. So we're going to take that and we're going to t- turn it into Seltzer Ball. Okay. Where instead, it, it, for those that are not familiar with what spike ball is, you take a small trampoline, like the old aerobic trampolines from yeah. back in the 80s. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it is a 2v2. And it's a basically like volleyball. Uh, you know, the first team serves the ball off of the trampoline, and then the other team has three hits to hit it back off the trampoline again. So instead of a ball, we're going to use a can of seltzer. Okay. To bounce it off of the trampoline. Great. Yes. <laughs> it doesn't have to be too expensive. Because for every time that the other team does not return the serve or uh-huh. does, you know, loses a point, they also have to drink. Yeah. Now, to win the game, if you are able to hit the ball, uh, ball, hit the. Yeah, call it the ball. The ball. Hit the <laughs> yeah. ball off of the trampoline. Yeah. They don't get it, and the can breaks. Mm. Automatic loss. Gotcha. Then they have to chug a second one. Chug the other. (laughs) Yeah. So, okay, yeah, if you're just looking to burn through a case of White Claw. (laughs) Yes, exactly. Yeah. Seltzer ball. Yeah, seltzer ball. (laughs) A couple other ones I saw on the TikTok, though. Okay. Uh, This one really got me back in the... It it gave me the itch. Oh, to get get dragon? Yeah, it gave me the itch. Uh Basically, it's a it's a it looked like the fish carnival game. What is the fish carnival game? So remember, you go to the carnival and you would have like it would be just a bunch of uh, fish bowls. Oh yes, yes, and yes, you, yes, you yes. Bounce yes. a bounce a pong ball into the fish bowl, and mm-hmm. if you get it, you win. Yeah, similar to that. Uh, the setup though is that it's a bunch of mixers oh. sitting on top of solo cups. Okay, and underneath the solo cups is the alcohol that gets mixed into the mixer. Oh, so you have, you have, you know, say Coke, 7-Up, orange juice, Mm -hmm, water, mm -hmm. whatever it may be. Okay. Yeah. And then like, you don't know how much alcohol is underneath the cup. Oh. Yeah. Oh. So like, I've seen like, so some of them come up as just like a normal, you know, like gin and tonic maybe, or, you know, a seven and seven. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then like, I saw one that was just like a, a, a booby trap. Of it was beer in a cup, <laughs> and then underneath it was four little mini bottles of vodka. <laughs> oh, oh no! <laughs> and then you had to pour the mini. <laughs> bottle. Yeah. Oh, that's like going real old school, like playing King's Cup. Yeah, where there's always that one asshole. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's very much like King's Cup, but it's, it was like a carnival game because it's like, yeah, you don't know what's going on underneath these cups, and you don't know what fries you're gonna win. <laughs> going on an adventure. Yeah. <laughs> you got. You know, throw the beer pong ball and you get it. And I was like, ah, oh, that sounds fun. That does sound fun. Uh, the other one I saw that was, it is, I saw a couple variations on it, but it's like shuffleboard. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so it's, you take like a long table or a long counter mm-hmm. and you mark off lines of like zones. Yeah. And then in each zone, you put an alcohol in it. Ah, okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and so like, you know, you, with, uh, the one way I saw was with Hot Wheel cars. Okay. So you just roll the Hot Wheel car, and it'll land in a zone. Yeah. And then that's the one you drink. Okay. The variation I saw was with uh, soda can. Okay. And you tape numbers around the soda can. Okay. So as it rolls, the number changes. Ah. And whatever number, co- so it correlates of zone and number. Oh, okay. And All it's right. like, that's how many shots you do. Oh, jeez. That's brutal. <laughs> yeah. I was like, that's awesome. That, that is. <laughs> I'm going to get you fucking blasted. <laughs> Real quick. Yeah. Oof. The, okay, so you, you talk about that. I think I found another variation. Bocce ball. Yeah. Instead of the little ball that you're supposed to go after, mm-hmm. just put a drink there instead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bury, bury some bottles in the sand. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's very Italian. <laughs> <laughs> Put some ouzo out there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's Greek, but <laughs> it, oh, it is Greek, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. Greek, but all right, fine. We'll put Palinka back out there. 
Sure, yeah. You can put Plinky out there. Or you can put Malord out there. Yeah. <laughs> it's Chicago Italian. That's good enough. <laughs> but like, yeah, that, that definitely works. You try you just try to roll your and then you gotta make it like, I don't know, extra worth it somehow. Like put like a really good drink or something out yeah, there. Yeah, because you you want to get it. Yeah. So put like a really nice bottle, like even maybe maker's mark or something. Yeah. I don't know that you should necessarily play with bocce balls though play the bocce ball rules but i'm just thinking about something how, a little more nerfy yeah a little nerfy because i'm just thinking about sure you're trying to roll it out there mm-hmm. but there's gonna be one dumb fuck it's who gonna... throws the ball <sighs> and it, it shatters the bottle <laughs> see that's where the bocce ball le- or the bocce league comes in to do a little self-policing mm-hmm. and they tie it you know, kindly but firmly yeah. ask them to leave. Yeah. Yeah. But I do I do like just like burying bottles in the sand. Yeah. And rolling balls out to This is a good ass idea. That's smart. That's that's one we just invented right there now. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Another that's fun on the beach. <laughs> if the beach is cool. <laughs> that's it. We're going to Sheffield Lanes after this. They got bocce courts. <laughs> Hold on, what are you doing with that post digger? Give me a minute. Just watch. Just just <laughs> bear with me. Just five bear with minutes. Me. Five minutes. Just let me dig these holes. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff said it was okay. Yeah. Uh, another one I saw that was really, really involved. Okay. The, and this had to be like an invention of the pandemic. <laughs> I'm sure a lot like, of them were. Yeah. Like the, I, I definitely saw some things start popping up in the pandemic, but like mm. I, I have not seen this one until today. Yeah. People have figured out beer pinball. Really? Or really alcohol pinball. Okay. <laughs> and it, it's like half pinball, half uh, Plinko. Okay. And the way it works is they 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 built this board and they have like a, they have a shooter and they built the shooter out of a red solo cup and a balloon. Okay. And a beer pong ball. <laughs> All right. And so like they tape off the balloon around the end of a cut, cut open red solo cup. Okay. And then you put the ball into the balloon and you pull the balloon back. Ah. And so you use the elastic to shoot it up the ramp. Oh, I really like that. Yeah. And then at the top of the ramp, they had like beer cans to act as a bumper. Okay. To kind of randomize where the ball will go down the board. Yeah. Now on the board, they had a bunch of like different uh, alcohols and shot bottles. Mm -hmm. And then they had like little uh, medicine cup. From, you know, from like the top of uh, NyQuil bottles. Okay, yeah. Cut those so they can collect the ball. Okay. If it happens to land into it. Yeah. So like you have like, you you have like death traps along the board. All right, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And then at the end of the board was just like a, a Plinko row mm-hmm. of solo cups with different instructions on it. All right, that's pretty cool. So it's like two shots or drink a beer or, you know. Wow, that is that is a lot. That that is for sure a <laughs> pandemic project. It was, yeah, it was a lot of work, <laughs> and I had seen more than one of those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I was like, "Damn, that's fucking cool." That is that's a lot of work, but that is fucking cool. <laughs> Something tells me that came out of an engineering school. Had to have, had to. Have. It just, it just it, makes sense. Yeah, just the amount of engineering that went into it because it was the the whole thing that they figured out a plunger. I, like I saw one that was just like a plink of. Plinko board. Okay. I keep trying to say Plinko backboard, <laughs> which is, that's our version of yeah. it. <laughs> our version of it would be Plinko backboard. <laughs> but yeah, I saw one that didn't have the plunger and everything, and I saw one that had the plunger. I was like, yeah, you really fucking engineered the yeah. shit out of this. Yep. But it makes the most sense because it becomes the most random. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah. It, it's like pachinko for drinking. <laughs> All those words just run together. Plinko, Pachinko, and Plinkovac. It's such a melding of of just cultures right there. (laughs) Pachinkovac. It's a board made of Centauri whiskey and Plinkovac. Pachinkovac. Oh, damn. You can get somebody with that. A little Hedicino nest. (laughs) Maybe some Sapporo. Yeah. All right. Let's make that happen. Some new Belgian because they're owned by Sapporo. (laughs) I'm all right with that. Yeah. Yeah, that one was a lot. <laughs> uh, do you see, do you have another one that you? I, I have another variation, uh, something to get the kids. Yeah, uh, because you know, kids are growing, growing every day. They're turning twenty one, mm-hmm. so we need to turn a little bit to technology. Okay, so I think we need to. I think we need to update beer pong. Ah, with drones. 
Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, actually, I've seen something similar already, and I believe we've talked about it on the show. Oh, have we? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I believe this was a pandemic invention, but it's very of the time, and it was Roomba. It was Roomba Pong. Oh, okay. All it's, right. I believe we talked about Roomba Pong in the yes, past. Yes, we have. Where, yes. where they had glued cups to the top of a Roomba and it just rolled around on a table and it wouldn't go off the edge of the table because it could read the edge. Right. So it would hit the edge, turn around, come back. Damn. So we had that. But how, how does drone Pong? So you, you go back and forth. Obviously, each team has to have their own drone. Mm -hmm. So there is prep. Yeah. So what you do is you have a certain time limit. And I know how you're going to set this time limit because while the pilot is trying to fly the drone to get the ping pong ball over towards the Cubs, because it's going to be easier to just do a straight down drop rather than a throw. Right. Your time limit is set by your partner has to be drinking while you're flying the drone. Oh. So you want to get it done as quick as possible. So you're going to fly the drone, which is holding the ping pong ball over to the cup. Yeah. Yeah. At that point, normal, you know, beer pong rules come into effect. That is, that is, that is pretty ingenious, and it's a lot better than what I was thinking when you first said this. Okay. Because when you first said this, I was thinking drone pong, and I was thinking there would be a pilot and a shooter. No. And then, like, whoever was, like, the pilot was piloting a cup to oh. get hit. <laughs> <laughs> no. I was like, I don't know, that doesn't sound like a lot of fun, because that probably doesn't happen that much. Right. I like your version a whole hell of a lot better, because yeah. that, that... That's time limit imperative on both parties because mm -hmm. you want the pilot to shoot as quick as possible so you're not waterfalling. Right, for, exactly. <laughs> but also the guy waterfalling has to keep waterfalling. Yeah. yeah. So so you have to work together to get this done as quickly as possible. That is definitely also some engineering shit. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> but, <laughs> but that's a really good one. <laughs> it's a team building exercise. It really is, yeah. That, that's a really good one. People try that. People do that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> send us send us video. Do the drone pong. Do the <laughs> drone pong. I think uh, there was we always some people called bombard you know dodgeball bombardment. Yeah. I feel like this is a lot better name for bombardment. It is because yeah. it's literal bombardment. Right. Yeah. It's literally bombing pong cups with a beer, beer pong. <laughs> right. Yeah. Much better. <laughs> and same rules apply if you knock the cups down. Mm -hmm. you, you know you got to keep drinking. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, a lot of the rules are still in effect. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know how you're going to bounce or swipe or anything like that. Right. But you're playing with drones. I say, you're having yeah. enough fun. Yeah. Yeah. I say, I, I say, you know, one cup, one in is fine. Yeah. Because you're already waterfalling. Exactly. <laughs> you have people waterfalling. You don't need to. You're already playing a dangerous game. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I had one, and this goes into the realm of danger. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> And it's actually not even the drinking that's the dangerous part. <laughs> okay. It's called beer darts. Beer darts? Yeah. Okay. Uh, this one came up on the old YouTube, actually. Oh, classic. But, uh, it, yeah, beer darts is uh, you have basically two lines of people. Okay. And they're facing off each other. Mm -hmm. And they have darts in sitting on the ground in between their legs. Okay. Oh. And the teams have steel tip darts. <laughs> <laughs> and they throw the darts at the beer cans. That is currently between the other people's legs. Right. Oh, boy. Yeah. Wildly dangerous. Oh, boy. <laughs> that makes Stump look like child's play. Right. <laughs> I was like, there's no way people are just getting stabbed in the feet. Like, Right. Yeah. With dirty darts. Yeah, just dirty lawn darts. <laughs> like, just dirty darts right in the feet. <laughs> uh, apparently, you win, though, like... You know, if you can knock down the other team's beers, okay. Uh, if you hit, obviously, if you hit a beer with a steel tip dart, it's going to puncture. Right. So the the whole puncture aspect of that is you have to drink the beer. Okay. Until know. it stops. Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so it's so it's no longer you know spraying everywhere. Wow. So yeah, I like that. I like it, but also I would be wearing like steel toes in a cup. Yes. I do not like want to catch an errant dart right in the ball bag. I, I, yeah, that would be like me wearing, you know, like chainsaw cutting pants. Right. You know. Yeah. Something with Kevlar layers. Yeah. Like, I'm, I know how good of a shot I'm not. Right. And I know how good of a shot the people I usually play darts <laughs> with aren't. I'm dumb, but I'm not stupid. Right. <laughs> 
So yeah, <laughs> beer darts, beer darts. Uh, yeah, the the incredibly dangerous variation on lawn darts. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why those people were doing it. It was stupid, but also cool. <laughs> I, I think you just explained it right there. Yeah. <laughs> it's stupid. But come on. Who but, wouldn't want to do that? But kind of cool. Yeah. I had one more. Okay. Uh, and this one was one I invented myself. All right. Because it's based off a current trend that I see going around okay. on, on the social media. So the current trend is a, a lot of people are kind of making uh, light of like uh, serial killers or not serial killers, but like slasher films. Right. And, you know, the, the trope of the slasher film of, like, the slasher is always just walking. Yeah. You know, like Michael Myers and Jason, they're always just walking right. as people are running. Mm-hmm. And so the, the the trend is seeing if you can run to your door and unlock it before somebody chasing you catches you. Okay. You know, but the person chasing you is doing just a standard you know, stride. Yeah. They're not running. You're running. Right. So you get like a four second, five second head start, you know, and you have to run to your door and unlock your door before the person gets to you. Okay. And I think, you know, like almost all of the ones I've seen, everybody gets caught. <laughs> oh. Because they, they're panicking and they're... <laughs> right, right, right. Know? So the 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 drinking game variation on this is... Doing the same thing. Yeah. Or, you know, unlocking your car or, you know, whatever it is. You mm-hmm. pick a task. Yeah. To complete before maybe you can flip the cup. Ah, you okay. Know? Whatever it is. Nice callback. Yeah. You, you got to complete a task before the person catches you. Mm-hmm. If they catch you, though, you get iced. Oh. <laughs> oh. 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 I thought that was dead. <laughs> <laughs> It's not. It's uh, icing still happens out there. <laughs> still happens in the wild. I've heard of. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. But I felt like it was pretty, you know, pretty apropos of like the the thing you're doing at the moment. You know, yeah. You get iced. Yeah. I thought that we left that back in the tens. Nah. <laughs> it still happens. Can we? <laughs> you can try, but it still happens. Yeah. I'll just, just no, thank you. Yeah. But yeah, you drink it. You you earned that. <laughs> you go ahead. You're playing Icicle Myers. <laughs> <laughs> Was that an entire setup just for that joke? No, actually, I just came up All with right. that joke while we were sitting here. <laughs> like, that was pretty damn good. I was, just, I was just running through. I was like, Ice Myers? Nah. <laughs> Icicle Myers. Yeah. That's Icicle good. Myers. Yeah. Icicle Myers. And then, you know, you, you ice your friends. <laughs> nice. But yeah, you could do flip in the cup or shoot a pong ball, whatever it may be. Yeah. Yeah. Or perhaps you could get into different levels. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You can turn it into a Ninja Warrior kind of thing. <laughs> I, I did. There was one I actually forgot that oh, I saw. That, okay. that I saw was fun. Uh, this is back on the TikTok that I saw, mm-hmm. and it's similar to the shuffleboard one. Yeah, but it was uh, people would set up a bunch of line, uh, like a line of those tea lights. Okay, so like the little tea light candles. Yeah, and what you do is you you make a big line of it on a table. And you sit at one end of the table, and then each tea light represents an alcohol. Okay. And then you blow as hard as you can, and however many candles you put out, uh-huh. you know, it's kind of like almost like a test the strength meter. Ah, okay. All right. So the, so the farther you go, you know, it is, yeah. and it determines whatever alcohol you get. I like that. Yeah. I, I really like that. Yeah. It was like, oh, that's really fun. <laughs> it is. Yeah. I'm going to steal that. Sure. Thank you, the internet. <laughs> yeah. You got to go on TikTok and. Search hashtag drinking games. <laughs> that means I got to go on the TikTok. I know, but well, I did it for you. I, I did the legwork for everybody else. Thank you for that, Steve, because <laughs> I am not a youth of America. That's right. <laughs> I braved. <laughs> Waded into it. Yeah, I, I braved the TikTok. <laughs> I went into it. Yeah, thank you for your service. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't steal my valor. <laughs> <laughs> if you play one of these games out in the wild, you have to reference me. <laughs> Don't steal my valor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, if you have any other new or upcoming drinking games that you'd like to share with us, let us know. Mm-hmm. I'm genuinely curious what else is out there. Yeah. What have been, what has people been in inventing? Yeah. What are the kids up to these days? Yeah. Cause like on initial search, I still saw, I still saw all the, you know, the old classics mm-hmm. of, you know, beer pong and Kings and ride the bus and, you know, I haven't played Ride the Bus in a long time. Right. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Ride the Bus is just a fucking blackout game. It is. That's barely a game. <laughs> yeah, that's just, let's just put cards in front of us while we just get hammered. Yeah, that's barely a game. Yeah. 
Um, I did see that there is a, uh, a, 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 a variation. Somebody has taken, I believe, Kings. Okay. Yeah, somebody's taking Kings Digital. Oh, no. And to, like, now it's a phone app. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I've, I've seen there there are digital versions now. That does not surprise me. <laughs> of, of these games, but yeah. I I marching forward into the digital revolution of getting blackout drunk. <laughs> you know that would be a good podcast series. Mm. Going into the the origins of drinking games. Mm. Hmm. I would I, I you know you know you do an episode on beer pong. You right. do an episode on flip cup. Mm-hmm. All those. I would be genuinely curious to do a historical dive on those. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. But it's something we can do for future episodes. Yeah. 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 I, it's a good question. Where did some of these originate? <laughs> right. So that's something we'll have to get full production value. <laughs> we might have to buy some songs somewhere. Need a research grant. Yeah. <laughs> Need a library card. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go down to the Oakdale library. They got to have something. Yeah. You just got any books on beer pool? <laughs> Where I come from? <laughs> Quarters, as in the coin? Well, kind of. We're having Zoom calls with like 75-year-old men. <laughs> it was back at Alpha Data Kappa. <laughs> we used nickels because that's what we had available. <laughs> the beer pongs were actually made out of wood. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't bounce well. And that's why the cup was worth two. Because if you made wood bounce... <laughs> uh, first beer pong game was used... <laughs> Peach baskets. <laughs> <laughs> the beer spilled out all the time. We had to ring the baskets to get the beer out. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're going to do that in a future episode. <laughs> That'll happen in the winter time when I'm super bored. Yeah. <laughs> we used to play ringer with the, <laughs> with the horseshoes. <laughs> And if you just, all you had to do was hit somebody in the neck <laughs> and they had the drink. <laughs> Oh man! All right, let's get back to this beer. This what? It, what, what was the name of it? The Sour My Patch Sour by My Patch, yes. by Numbers Brewing. <sighs> didn't get better. No, didn't get better. No, it just yeah. Sorry, it's uh sorry if you're listening, but this is kaka. <laughs> yeah, it it just yeah it doesn't for a beer coming out in 2022 and being a hazy IPA. Like we are inundated with hazy IPAs, right? We have been since 2018, <laughs> whether we like that or not. Yeah, whether we like it or not. Uh, you know, I and there are some I do like, you know, I, I like a whole bunch out there, right? This but that's such a quality bar that you have to hit. Mm-hmm. And we have so many other goof ass beers out there that are made with candy, right? You know, <laughs> I, I, I would be willing to try something else by them. You know, I, yeah. I'd be willing to give them another shot. Right. It was it was their first time on the show. It was the first beer that we had from them. Right. They're not banned or anything like that. No, but this one was not good. Right. So what do we do now? Well, as we've established last week. Yes. The way we do the podium now is we'll still do bronze, silver, and gold. Mm-hmm. But the bronze, or not the bronze, but the third beer is going to come from something we drank throughout the week. Yes. And we can compare it to the beers that we had on tonight's show. Yes. So, if you have an idea and I you do. want to go first, you can I go. Do. Okay. I do. Okay. Uh, and I am going to, uh, in the bronze medal position, I think we know which one's going to go. Sure. The the numbers is it's going to go bronze. We've already talked about it. Uh, in the silver medal position this is this is actually kind of tough because they're good for different reasons mm-hmm. but i think i'm gonna go with the birdfish uh the bohemian pilsner in a very very strong silver okay uh good beer uh and the fact that you found it interesting was high marks mm-hmm. uh and i i am a pilsner person uh and i enjoyed it as well i would buy more yeah to the point that i kind of want to go check them out like in person see what else they got going on up there I am interested in what they can do stout wise. Yes, but I'm also slightly interested in that Italian pilsner because because tho- those are usually hoppier, mm-hmm. and so I, I would be willing to try that. I'm definitely just willing to try more from them in general. Right, you know they, they seem to have come out of nowhere, but they have started strong. <laughs> well, 
I mean, Colombiana is kind of nowhere. It's kind of nowhere, <laughs> but also it's just like, like when you pop up and you have a Bohemian Pilsner, that's mm. not an easy, you know, not an easy style. Right. So, yeah. And, and, and I say out of nowhere with love. Because I grew up in a middle of nowhere as well. Right. So <laughs> you grew up middle of nowhere adjacent to middle of nowhere, Ohio. Yeah. So. <laughs> I get it. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. Uh, but no, good beer. And I, I, I want to check out what else I got going on. But in, in a gold medal position was a beer I had from Flying Machine. Okay. Uh, it was their boat soda, mm. uh, which is a key lime cream ale. Oh, damn. Yeah. Dang. It was nice and tart. Yeah. Uh, because I was expecting it. It was not a key lime pie where mm-hmm. it had a lot of lactose and stuff like that. It was a lot more straight key lime. Yeah. So it had that tartness to it. Okay. And it, since it was on a cream ale, yeah, I, I'd probably grab that and, and the birdfish. I believe it. And, <laughs> and feel good about the day. Yeah. No, I, I believe it. That sounds like it makes a lot of sense because mm-hmm. you know, flying machine, they make good beers. So. They do. All right. I, to no surprise at all, We'll put that sour my patch in bronze, mm-hmm. far, far and away bronze. <laughs> However, I will surprise you. I'm listening. Silver is not the Bohemian Pilsner. Oh, yeah. What is silver? It? I'm going to continue down the Ohio track, though. Oh, okay. And I had from uh, Great Lakes Brewing. Mm-hmm. They put out a lemon hefeweizen. I've had that before. Yeah, I like it. I I thought it was okay. Yes, I didn't get enough hefeweizen. Okay. Notes to it. You know what I'm saying? Like there, there just wasn't enough about it that called out that it was a Hefeweizen rather than just a plain wheat ale, mm-hmm. which is what I was getting more of. I was just getting like a lemon wheat. Okay. Rather than like a lemon Hefeweizen. Gotcha. So, yeah, it, I mean, it's fine. I like it. I like it. It's it's refreshing. It's mm-hmm. good enough. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, because it just didn't hit the notes that I was looking for. Mm-hmm. And then the Bohemian Pilsner did. I'll actually put that Bohemian Pilsner in gold. Birdfish, you should be very proud of yourself. I don't like Pilsner. <laughs> <laughs> Look, they got a fucking layup episode is what they got. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> so we're going to have to bring them back. Yeah, we'll bring them back. I'm just saying they had a very easy episode mm-hmm. because I didn't have much this week that I didn't already talk about. Fair. Fair. You know, because the other things I was drinking this week was things I already had was like stuff from Stick City. Yeah. And then the other stuff I put in that mix and match was like the Cider Boy Sidey that I already talked about. Mm-hmm. And I was drinking more of the uh, Burial, which we had last week. Right. So there wasn't too much new that I had this week. <laughs> well, yeah, it, it, on my end as well, I, I went slumming a little bit. I had Bush Light this week. <laughs> <laughs> it's, <okay>. it's situational. <laughs> it's situational. Whatever. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so, yeah, the Birdfish had a very easy week, so they get the win with a Bohemian Pilsner. <laughs> I, uh, uh, you know, if it was on last week, mm. it doesn't win. It. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> because we had Coffee Porter last week. Right. From Burial. <laughs> From Burial. You don't win that. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody does. Only Burial <laughs> wins that. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, yeah, congratulations to them. Yes. And, uh, yeah, we'll probably have more birdfish in the future whether we reach out to them maybe we go over there or you know maybe i just find myself at vintage and see what else i got right. obviously they're canning and putting shit out so yeah or maybe i stop there on my way back and there you go cans. who knows we'll see <laughs> but interested yeah, yeah. agreed Pe- peaked interest yes but uh yeah if you want to reach out to us on the social media and you have things to say about things we've said <laughs> <laughs> as one brewery may, <laughs> uh, then all you have to do is search Hop Nation USA on social media. That'll get you Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And if you want to listen to brand new episodes of the Hop Nation USA podcast every Friday, as you should, then search Hop Nation USA on your favorite podcatcher like Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, anything that starts in pod or ends in cast. We're on all of those platforms. We're on good pods, which ends in pods. So, you know. <laughs> But we're also on Pod Bean, which starts with Pod. So it's madness. It's all there. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Can't figure it out. <laughs> and we're on Listen FM. That doesn't have any of that in it. <laughs> but if you're on any of those platforms, leave a five star review because we are six beers buried in a bocce court show, but they only let us use five. 
And that's a bigger crime than what I'm about to do to my liver after watching all these drinking games. <laughs> <laughs> nice to know you, little buddy. Yeah. <laughs> this is it. This is end game. <laughs> <laughs> this is your stop. <laughs> we're checking out. <laughs> we're gonna play some we're gonna play some bocce court. Uh Whatever. <laughs> We're going to play some Pachinkovac. <laughs> Pachinkovac is for my birthday. <laughs> there you go. Oh, man. All right. Uh, let's wrap it up. Let's go do something next week. Yeah. Next week, uh, we'll be featuring people from um, the uh, the homebrew con. So, yes. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully, we're able to get everybody on, but we'll definitely have some news and notes and interviews about that next week. So, check it out. And until then... See ya. Bye.